So, in my previous class, I said to you that today I will teach you about Fashion! Very good. So, it is mess and today we will read about Fraction. So, what is called a Fraction? Listen to me first. Any number divided with another number that is called a fraction. Any number, suppose 3 divided by 5, this is a fraction. 7 divided by 9, this is a fraction. Minus 2 divided by 3, this is also a fraction. So, a fraction can be written in the form P by Q. But this, achha, what is this called? Numerator. This is? Denominator. Denominator. So here P is the numerator. Shortly I am writing. And Q is the denominator. Now you say me. Denominator of a fraction, can it be zero? Will it be zero? Can, be, can it be zero in any case? No. It can never be zero. It can never be zero. So here this Q means the denominator can never be equal to zero. So any number which is in the form of P by Q that is called a fraction. And in fraction the upper one that is called the numerator and the lower one that is called the denominator. Now, how many types of fractions are there? How many types of fractions are there? There are three types of fractions mainly. Mainly there are three types of fractions. One is proper fraction. Proper fraction. Second one is improper fraction. And Third one is mixed fraction. <coughs> so there are three types of fraction: proper fraction, improper fraction, and mixed fraction. What is this proper fraction called? In a fraction, if numerator will be smaller than the denominator. So, in a fraction, if the numerator is smaller than the denominator, then it is called a proper fraction. Look here. Numerator is smaller than the denominator. So, 3 by 5, it is a proper fraction. Proper fraction. Then, 2 by 9, it is a proper fraction. Yeah. It is also a proper fraction. Then 1 by 3, that is also a proper fraction. Because here in every case, in every case, numerator is smaller than the denominator. So in a proper fraction, numerator, shortly I am writing NR, numerator is always less than the denominator. That is the proper fraction. These are the examples. Okay? Yes, sir. Now, what are called improper fraction? If the, if the numerator will be greater than denominator, numerator will be? Yes, numerator will be greater than the denominator. Then that is called the improper fraction. For example, improper fraction. Example, suppose 5 by 3, it is one improper fraction. 7 by 4, it is one improper fraction. 11 by 5, it is one improper fraction. Because in every case, numerator is more than the denominator. So that is the improper fraction. Now, Every improper fraction can be converted into a mixed fraction. Very good. So, every, here, for the example I have taken, 
it will be used. That's why I am not erasing it. So every every improper fraction can be converted into a fixed fraction. For example, this pi by three, pi by three. I can change it. I can change it to fixed fraction. How pi by three directly you divide? Pi divided by three. Three one there. Three. Pi minus two is two. Two. Now you count from this way. That is one whole two by three. This whole two by three. So pi by three we can write this one whole two by three. Now this part one whole part is there and one fractional part is there. So in a mixed fraction, some whole part will be there and some fractional part will be there and combined it is called a mixed fraction. Understanding? Yes, yes. Similarly, 7 by 4. 7 divided by 4. 4 1 the 4 minus 3. So, I will come from this way. So, 7 by 4 in mixed form. What we can write it is one whole, one whole, three by four. Why you are not saying it? You are doing your work. First you try to understand. First you understand, then you will write one whole three by four. Oh, seven by four. It is equal to one whole three by four. Seven by four. Which was one improper fraction. Now it is one whole three by four. This is called the whole part. Whole. Because it is a whole number always. Whole part. And this is called the fractional part. Because it is always gives a fraction value. The fractional part. So in a mixed fraction, some whole part is there and fractional part is also there. Now, 11 by 5, this one. 11 by 5. How can I form the form? How can I make it mixed form? 11 by 5. 5 divided by 5. 5 divided by 11. Or 11 divided by 5. Divide Koro. Do divide. Send it and sir. Yes, who said? Who said? What the brother na? The brother na? Very good. So it is two whole one by five. This will be the whole and this by this. So it is two whole one by five. This is the least fraction. Similarly, similarly. 41 by 7. 41 by 7. It is one improper fraction. A proper fraction. We can change it to a mixed fraction. Now, that, like that, it is divided 41 by 7. It is 41 by 7. Yes. So it is 7 into 5, 36. So it is 5 whole 6 by 7. 5 whole 6 by 7. Always you will to make the way you will make the mid fraction come from this way. 5 whole 6 by 7. So this is equal to 5 whole 6 by 7. So these are the different type of fractions. Another what are called equivalent fraction? Equivalent. Equivalent. What do you mean by equal and equivalent? Equal means exactly same. Equivalent means not equal. But in some way it is equal. Exactly not equal. Suppose 3 by 5. <coughs> now, equivalent fraction means <coughs> if a same number will be multiplied to both the numerator and denominator of a fraction, then it will be here. <coughs> equivalent fraction. Now, <coughs> any number you multiply, I 
multiply three and three. Then nine by fifteen. So this nine by fifteen is what we do when I plus all of this one. Same three by five four. May I open my seven? It puts me anything in the multiply. Now this is equal to this from one by thirty five. So this is a equivalent fraction of three by five. Same three by five four. I multiply. I multiply five in both both numerator and denominator. That is fifteen by forty five. This is also one equivalent fraction of this one. So for a given fraction, how many equivalent fractions you can make? Infinite number because any number you can multiply to the numerator and also same number to denominator. So number of equivalent fractions you can make for a given fraction. So you see, if I can solidify three, then three it is five. Same same fraction I am getting number. If I can cancel it by seven, it is three, it is five because I have multiplied seven to both. So by that seven, I can cancel both the numerator and denominator. So same three by five I get. If I cancel to this one by five, the same three by five will get. So this, 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 like this, so many equivalent fractions we can get for a given fraction. Now I go seven. Now a question for you. Who said write four equivalent? He said like this the question may come. Equivalent. Write four equivalent fractions of two by three or three by five. Write four equivalent fractions of B by five. Like that, you can do. So first one, three by five. You can multiply any digit, any digit. Suppose I multiply two here, two here. So six by ten. This is one equivalent fraction of three by five. Another, any number you can multiply. Three by five. I multiply four. This is equal to 12 by. This is also one equivalent fraction of this one. I multiply. Which we anything you can multiply. I multiply 11. Both 11. Numerator denominator. Now it is 33 by. This is also one equivalent fraction of 3 by 5. Now again because it is just 4, so I multiply 9. So it is. 27 by 45. This is also one equivalent fraction of this one. So like this, if anyone will ask you, write 10 equivalent fractions of 3 by 5. Can you write? Yes, sir. Yes. Any number you multiply in numerator and also the same in denominator, and you get the get the equivalent fraction. So so many equivalent fractions you can find the find for a given. That's all. Okay. Now, different operations like addition, subtraction. We can add two fractions. We can add. We can subtract. We can multiply, and we can divide. So, we can add two fractions. Suppose it is three by four plus. One by four. Here, both the denominators are same. same. So, when you will add these two, you see, you give the equal symbol, then you give the fraction line, fraction bar, just in between the equal symbol. Then both have the denominator four. So here it will also four. Now. If the denominator will be equal, then you simply either add. If it is addition, will be there. Simply add. If uh, subtraction will be there, simply subtract. But first of all, you have to make the denominator same. 
If denominator will be same, then you can add the numerator. Then you can add, you can subtract. So here, here it is three plus one. That is equal to four by four. That is equal to that is your answer. I am giving you another example. Three by four plus two by five. Here you see. Here, these two denominator are they same? No, sir. So we have to make them same, right? Yes, sir. So four and five. What is the LCM of four and five? Twenty. Twenty. Very good. So we have to make both the denominator equal to twenty. So क्या करना पड़ेगा? Here I multiply five. And as I am multiplying five here in denominator, I have to multiply in numerator. Here two by five to make it twenty. Why twenty? Why twenty? Because LCM of four and five is two. It is twenty. So to make it twenty, I multiply four here, four here. Right? Yes. Means these are the equivalent fraction sign made. It is fifteen by twenty. Plus, it is eight by twenty. Now, just like the previous question, you see here, oh, both have the same denominator four. Here, I made both the denominator equal to twenty. Do not be twenty twenty go away. Now, what will be? Both are twenty means denominator will be twenty, and this two will be simply added. So it is fifteen plus eight. That is equal to twenty-three by twenty. Now this twenty-three by twenty. Is it is a proper fraction or a improper fraction? Improper fraction. Who said proper fraction? Somebody said here. Somebody said proper fraction. That is wrong. It is improper fraction. Yes. So we know that we have to be proper fraction. We can change it into a mixed fraction. So if you will change it to mixed fraction, it will be. One whole three by twenty. One whole three by twenty. And that is your final answer. Okay. Another last question. I'm just explaining you properly. You right? Question. Add three by eleven minus two by <coughs> seven, three by eleven and two by seven. Eleven and seven, both are the prime numbers. You know what are called prime numbers? Those numbers which are which are which will be not divisible by any other number except one and itself are called the prime numbers. These two are prime number. Both are prime number. So what will that LCM? Simply multiplication. So eleven into seven. That is equal to seventy-seven. Good. So here LCM of LCM of seven and eleven is equal to seventy-seven. So now what we will do? We will make the denominator both the denominator equal to seventy-seven. Yes. So that equal to three by eleven. I want to change it to make it seventy-seven. So I have to multiply seven in numerator and denominator. It's what we do for. Now minus two by seven. Originally it was two by seven. I want to make it seventy-seven. Seventy-seven. So what I will multiply? Eleven. You are also eleven. Now what I got here? It is. It is. Twenty-one by seventy-seven. Ah, it is twenty-one by seventy-seven minus twenty-two by seventy-seven. Don't know it both now. Seventy-seven is the denominator. So it is denominator that is seventy-seven, and it will be twenty-one minus twenty-one minus twenty-two. Twenty-one minus twenty-two. How much? Very good. So this is equal to minus one.
1 by 77 and that is your answer. Okay? Yes, so the first exercise based upon the addition of the fraction and equivalent fraction how can you find? So I did two questions already I from your <coughs> exercise I did these two questions and four questions are there in exercise 5b. Like this please which, which one is proper fraction, which one is improper fraction? Uh, what are the uh, equivalent fractions of equivalent fractions for this? So rest of the questions means five questions are there. You will do your homework and you will ask me your doubt in next class. And in next class I will teach you. Here, today I taught you addition. Next class I will, I will teach you subtraction. Then if time will be there, there is multiplication, then addition. Then pura ka pura combination means one sum where addition will be there, subtraction will be there, and multiplication, everything will be there. Okay, so for today, this is all about the class. So we will meet the next class. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you.